section 8.2, example 6, and we're going to start with this thing called rose curves. So rose curves will have the form where we have r equals a cosine or sine of n theta, where n is bigger than or equal to 2. So essentially our angle has a coefficient. It makes rose curves. They're going to look like flowers. When n is odd, we'll have n petals. And when n is even, there will be 2n petals, so 2 times n. So let's just start with an example and see what happens. So example six, graph the polar equation r equals sine two theta. So this will be a rose curve with two n petals. So that'll be four petals here. So it's gonna make some sort of flower and there's gonna be four petals. So that gives me a hint in what I'm looking for. Um, because theta has a coefficient, I'm gonna, plot more points. So rather than going from 0 to pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, I'm going to divide everything by 2 to go twice as fast because the coefficient is 2. So let's set up a table. Theta, r equals sine 2 theta. So we'll go from 0 to pi over 4 to pi over 2 to 3 pi over 4, to pi. And then this might be enough, um, but we might want more. So we don't know yet. Um, we might want to go all the way to 2 pi. Um, but let's maybe just go to pi, see if that's enough, and then we can add more points if we need more points. So why don't you pause the video and plug all of these angles into sine 2 theta. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the values. So pause the video so you can find them. So I get 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. So let's go ahead and plot these. So 0, 0 will be in the middle, right? It's in the origin. The radius is 0. And then at pi over 4, we're going to go out to 1. So pi over 4 would be right here. And we'll go out to 1. Um, because 1's the biggest value, I'm going to have my r's go by 1 half. So 2 will represent 1, just so we can see the shape a little bit better. So my guess is it's going from 0 and making a circular motion to pi over 4, because everything is circular motion. But let's see what happens. So at pi over 2, we're back to 0. So pi over 2, we're back at 0. So what that tells me is that when I, round, when I make this pedal, it doesn't go like that. It comes back before pi over 2. So it's kind of telling me where the pedal starts and ends. So the pedal is in between 0 and pi over 2. Because we're starting at 0, we're going out making a pedal, and then we're coming back to 0. So that's one of my four pedals. Um, let's try 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4 would be right here. Um, the negative 1 tells me to reflect it, so it's going to be on the opposite side. So it looks like this is making another petal. And then we come back to 0 at pi. So what's happening is we're probably making a petal here, but it's being reflected. So that's like a cutoff for my petal. So I could probably guess what the rest of the curve looks like, because I know there's four petals, and it's probably just a reflection. But we could add more points just to be sure. So we'll do the same pattern, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2. 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi, just to make it all the way to 2 pi. So why don't you pause the video and plug those into sine of 2 theta and come back because you got them. All right. You're back because you paused the video and calculated them all. I got 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. So let's see what happens. We found two of the petals. So maybe this will give us the last two petals. So 5 pi over 4 would be down here. We're out to 1, so we'll go out here. And then 3 pi over 2, we're back at 0. So basically, that tells me my petal is in between these. It doesn't go past those lines. And there's my third petal. So as we go from zeros to 0, that's what's creating a petal. So I can, I'm almost confident that the last petal will be right here. Right, it's the only thing that makes sense. But let's see how that works. 7 pi over 4 is down here. 
Um, it's a negative one, so it gets reflected. So that's where it is. It's on the other side like we planned. And then two pi, we come back to zero and we create a rose petal. So that is my rose with four petals. Um, let's try one more rose curve. So let's look at cosine of three theta. So since it's odd, this is a rose curve with n petals. So that'll be three petals. So three on the flower. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So instead of going zero pi over two pi and so on, I'm gonna divide by three because of the coefficient of three for my values that I plug in. So I'm gonna do zero pi over six, pi over three, pi over two, basically counting by pi's over six now, two pi over three, five pi over six, and I'll stop at pi. I'll go to two pi if I feel like we need more information. But I feel like we have a lot of points, so we'll see what happens. So why don't you plug those in, pause the video and plug everything into r equals cosine three theta. So we'll just plug those all in. So you multiply the angle by three and then calculate the cosine and then come back. So let's see what I got. I got one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one. So I hope you tried those on your own because I think it's really good practice for the unit circle. So let's try to find these flower petals. So zero, one means we're gonna start out at zero. I'm gonna to go to one. I'm gonna do r is, I'm gonna make this r equals one, just so we can see the shape a little bit better. As long as you are consistent, it doesn't matter. Um, and then pi over six, we go back to zero. So pi over six. So basically that means we probably have a petal. It looks like maybe we don't have the full petal yet, but it has to come in before pi over six because that's when it hits zero. It'll make more sense when we get more pieces. So pi over three, we're gonna go to negative one. So pi over three is here. Negative one will be reflected. And then pi over two, zero. Uh, because of the reflection, it's probably on the other side. So basically I'm making a petal and it has to come in before pi over two. Um, but it's three pi over two because we're, we had that negative reflection. Because it's, it's essentially making a petal here, but reflecting it. Cool. All right. 2 pi over 3 is 1. So 2 pi over 3 will be here. And we'll make a point for a petal. And then 5 pi over 6, it comes back, which is this one. So that's telling me it's going to make a petal in between those two angles. So it has to come back. Yeah, you saw that. All right, we have a petal in between pi over two and five pi over six. So those are kind of telling me cutoffs for these petals. So the zeros are my cutoffs for those petals. And then let's see, pi, we get negative one. So we go to pi, we reflect, yeah, and that's where we're getting that last petal. There's a little bit of background noise, but I think I covered everything, so I hope that helped. We don't need to go to 2 pi in this one because we already found all three petals. I think if we go to 2 pi, it just repeats the shape. Um, but I highly recommend the zeros are basically your cutoffs for those petals. Same with the last one. Right, these were my cutoffs where the petals like started and ended. So I think that helps you draw them. Yeah. So I think just remember to identify the shape before you start and then plot some points. Um, 